OK, so we just saw some examples with some designing issues. So now let's look at some examples that how we can tell the story from different visualizations. So in some cases, we can even tell different stories from the same data. So the first example is Kroger Pharmacy Growth. And we can see that they did increase the sales of the pharmacies. Uh, so where the bar chart indicated the, the pharmacy sales and also the the line chart indicate the number of the pharmacies. And we can immediately tell there are some issues like they don't start from zero. Okay. Um, so now this chart we can see we also now they do start from zero for the bar chart. So we have the number of pharmacies and also number of the stores. So not all the stores have a pharmacy. And also the percentage of store with a pharmacy. We can see the percentage actually increased. Okay, however, for the percentage, they don't start from zero as well. And if we look at the real data, we can see for the pharmacies, they did have increase and they drop, then they dropped a little bit. For the number of stores, we can see they had increased initially and they have a constant declining. We saw constant declining of the number of the stores. So look at the total number of the Krog stores. We see that we did see that there is a constant declining over the few years. And we also see that there is in increase a little bit, but also still a little bit declining of the number of the pharmacies. OK, so now if we go back to our um, chart, we know that both stores and also pharmacies are declining but why the percentage of the pharmacies increase? OK, so I think the answer is that you uh, is that they are closing stores without pharmacies. So here we, we can tell that OK, Kroger actually has missed a very compelling message here. So in the past few years, Kroger closed stores that do not have pharmacies. And they had an increase of sales from the with fewer stores and fewer pharmacies. So that is a really a very compelling story that they achieved almost 12% increase in the sales with lower costs. And here, let's see another story that uh, we want to compare the number of employees in different offices. So in this uh, Hamilton County and also auditor's office. So this bar chart shows a number of employees in diff in those both offices in over different years. And we can immediately notice uh, some designing issues. And they didn't start from zero. OK, they are using this 3D effects. And they labeled each single marker. So that is really not necessary. So we can redesign that bar chart by putting that into a line chart. And we can see that for auditor's office, there is a declining number of the um, employees. And for this uh, county office, and we see there was an increase. And also next in the recent years, there is a steady declining. Uh, we can also put that chart into this dual axis chart. OK, so that is e even easier for us to compare. So both charts start at 100%. OK, however, they are using different axes. So uh, for the county, they're using the left Y axis. And for this office, uh, they're using the right Y axis. OK. And we can see that for the blue team that they have a very constant reduced staff from 2020, uh, 1990 until uh, to 2011. OK, so here, uh, uh, here this is the story. So the red team, so uh, Hamilton County has now seen this new chart. And they want see here you to create a chart for them to tell their story. So using the same data, can you design an alternative version for the right team to tell a bad story for them? 
against the blue team. OK, so again, let's back to our visualization. OK, so in this case, we, we did see that the, the, the blue team did a great job over the past uh, 20 years. But how can we use the same data to tell a story that is good for the right team? So there are two, uh, two ways. OK, so we can use um, absolute numbers instead of percentage. OK, because for the red team, uh, they have more stuff, reduced numbers. OK, or we can adjust the time period. OK, so we can maximize the reduction for this county. So since 2008. OK, so if we ignore those data and if we just look at after 2008 and we can see that for the red team, for the county, they have more stuff being reduced. OK, so that is a solution. OK, so this is not the, uh, a good example, but just an example can tell you that uh, so the visualizations are not objective. So you can customize your visualization to tell the story that is good for your team and also to to meet your purpose. OK, which is not, uh, I mean, it's, it's really your own decision. So um, but I just tell you that it is possible. So that's it's only your decision. So sometimes it might be good. Sometimes it is bad. OK, uh, so let's see another example. So now we can understand a bit when we see uh, politicians do this. So the chart was likely created by the blue team to show that how crazy that the right team is when discussing the top tax rate. So notice that all the other presidents are sitting on the top of the bars ex except Obama, who is pushing up a much smaller bar. OK. And this is one that surely the red team uh, discussing the factor that top 10 percent of the earners paid the 20% of all the taxes. OK, uh, so finally, uh, let's see a very famous visualization. So when we learn visualization, so almost all the professors will show you this chart. So this is one of the most famous visualization. And someone said this is possibly the best statistical graph ever done. So this one shows the Napoleon's campaign into Russia. OK, so the size of the bars represent the number of the troops. OK, initially, and they are marching towards Russia, Moscow. And we can see that uh, as long as they are marching towards Moscow, so the, the size of the troops has reduced. And when they retreat, during the retreat, the temperature is plotted on the bottom. We can see the temperature declined. OK. Along with their retreat, and also we can see they have fewer and fewer uh, troops, soldiers that are coming back. And the shape of the lines is based on the geographic environment of the troops. OK. So if you look at on the map, you can see that the shape matches the geographic environment. And if we look at an animation, so that might uh, easier for us to, to understand this visual this visualization. Okay, so they reached Mexico, uh, Moscow, and now they're coming back, and now we have we can see the temperature. Okay, so. What do you think about this visualization? Uh, so this is a variation of the visualization. So some people may like to make things in circular. OK, so this another visualization to, to tell the same story. OK, so we can see the troops has been the number of troops has been reduced. OK, again, so do you like this graph? Do you think this is the best 
statistical graph that ever down? Or not? Okay, and I can tell you that not everyone likes this graph. So some people think this is too complicated. Okay, uh, so um, this is one critic of this graph, saying that uh, this might be a good one if you started this one for like 15 minutes. Okay, and if a graph that cannot let you know the uh, the story within two seconds, it is not a success graph. Okay, uh, so later on we'll we'll talk about a rule what we call it five second rules. So that means when you create a dashboard, so you should make sure that your audience can understand the main topic of your dashboard within five seconds. Okay, and. Uh, Probably someone will prefer this this pie chart so that okay so that the simply the story is that just only twenty percent only two percent people survived so they all died we lost the war 